these two setups. So left hand one, ball back in the stance quite a bit. As we said, we knew your tendencies are. Your bad shots generally sort of those two or three things we get. Hitting the ground behind the ball, cutting off to the right there. So the way you would fix that would move the ball back in the stance so it goes nearer to your back foot and then have your hands kind of flicking or staying back to try to square the club face up. With a driver, it worked wonders, yeah? And you had some good drives. The problem was hitting a golf ball with that kind of flicky sensation with the hands is going to be inconsistent, okay? How much you flick is going to be, well, vary from shot to shot, okay? So you either get big hooks, high ones, fat ones, thin ones, or even cuts off to the right if you don't flick it enough, all right? So as you're swinging the golf club here now, Again, okay, decent shoulder turning rotation here now. As you go back in the goal, but nothing really sort of shifts towards target. There's your impact position. As we said, the edge of your hands there and the edge of your hands there are certainly back behind where they need to be. And there's no way your club head now is not going to be beaten to the wall. If there was a line there through your left side down here, there's no way your club head's going to stay there while your hands, I mean, your hands on the neck from don't even go through it. It's still probably back there, but the shaft is already in that angle. That club won the race very much before the, the hands and the head and the hips got there, okay? So therefore, it's a bit flicky and just that sends the ball quite high and a bit more of a launch. So we put that same line here now with the body, okay? Strengthen the grip up a little bit. It's not a massive, just lifting that club in the air, just turning a few degrees. Just when you put the hands forward, you were getting a bit more cut spin, so we're just finding your neutral grip position, okay? Up the top of the back swing here now, shifting into that green line. So you see your lower half now moving towards that green line. There's kind of the impact we're looking for. Edge of your hands now are on that wall. Knee and the leg movement towards there. Your back foot now is kind of leaning in, which we expect to sort of sit up towards that sort of lead shoulder. Everything now is moving more towards target. The launch angle now is down. And it basically takes that sort of club. And rather than bottoming out here... We're going to bottom out more here, yeah? And the club will find its low point underneath where the hands are, yeah? Where the club head and the, the grip kind of match vertically, that's the low point, yeah? If the hands are back here, the low point now is back behind the golf ball, yeah? But then in the pass, you had to do that flick with the hands because the ball's going to the right. So you kind of mass, you, you, you fix one fault but at the cost of another thing, yeah? Yeah, the ball's going straight, it might fat it or thin it. Okay, so I'm going to go straight with a good stroke, Offline with a good strike or straight with a bad strike. Well, is it going to be a thin shot? That could work, but this is, I go over so I need a bit more. What do you do? Yeah, your brain's all these different thoughts going through your head. And it's like, well, I'm not going to strike the goal ball very successfully. So, and again, you can see the smaller follow through, but it isn't just because you're kind of almost like Fleetwood S type holding off that follow through. Is the follow through. <coughs> You'll find comfortable. Yeah, yeah. You, you won't need to worry about how far your hands go. When you've got this at the moment, because you're thinking so much of that, as you turn your torso through, your hands and arms will find a comfortable spot. I mean, look at a lot of tour players, how many actually get their club ripping around their head there yeah. with their iron. With their driver, maybe a bit more, but Fleetwood, for example, um, doesn't tend to get the club much beyond his, his head there, does he really? So, And I think at the moment, because these swings are slightly shorter, the momentum is less. You're not swinging through quite as far and fast, that's all. But you will find your kind of eventually feel where that club needs to go. It doesn't really matter in terms of where your club's going to be positioned there. I'm more concerned about what that club's doing down here, sending the information to that golf ball, yeah? If the hands are slightly in front, and again, when we say shaftly, it's not just shove hands forward, it's the body shifting and moving to the left, yeah? While keeping the palm of your right hand kind of facing towards target, yeah? It's not back here flicking underneath, yeah. and it's not trying to roll the hands over. We're just moving the body better, getting the grip slightly stronger. So we turn that club face a smidgen and then your body can work more effectively so we can get that launch angle down. Then with chip shots, obviously, if we're doing those shorter shots there, you just bring the right foot back to the sort of front position here now. And then you can just play a small little shot. Practice with those alignment sticks if you can. You can just pick up some other bit of dowling if you want to borrow some money always around in the shop. If you, want to, if you do come down and do some practice, you're more than welcome to. Just get that feeling of that. I think from a home perspective practice, the two things I would work on is hands there, lean the shaft back behind your right foot on a, on a uh, doormat and just scrape the ground as much as you can. You'll just feel your body now moving and dragging that club. And then the other one, do some swings up against the wall, yeah? Yeah. Make sense? Good man.